So here we are in part three and I've um, I've drawn a couple of little indications of where the catkins are um, from the last one. So if you remember in part two we made our, our little snowdrops, we attached the little banner that says spring is in the air and we drew on the rough outline of where we're going to put our catkins. So this is our spring slow stitch. This is our hopeful, everything's gonna be okay, slow stitch. Um, there will be four of these. So part one and part two has brought you through to where we are now. So have a look for part one and part two. And um, today we're going to look at some more stem stitching, um, but we're, we're adding in chain stitching and we're adding in some French knots as well. So I will show you those and then we'll crack on with here. So the knot that I'm, uh, the knot, the stitch that I'm going to teach you now is called a French knot. And it's, it's not a difficult stitch to do, but you do have to be aware of your tension. So I've come out to create, actually I'm going to come out in the middle. Just bear with me. We'll just have a, a nice big thing here. Right, so to create the French knot, um, I'm using the hoop again just because it's slightly easier to show you. So where you've come out, you're going to go in very, very near where you've come out. But before you go back in, you're going to wrap the thread around the needle. So three or four times, so you're winding it around the needle. Okay, be careful not to stab yourself. And then when you've wound it round, you want to take that needle back down as close to the fabric as possible, slide the needle back without sliding all the stitches off, and then push it back through your fabric. And what you end up with is a little bobble. Now we're going to use these to create the textures on our catkins. But you can use these all over the place, they're really handy. So I might add a few in as texture for little snowflakes, you know, just do some little white ones perhaps. There's all sorts of reasons that you would use a French knot. So I'll do one more. So we come out and then wrap one, two, three, four, slide the needle right back down onto the fabric, slide the stitches to almost to the end and then back in virtually where you came from. Give it a tug, give it a pull and there's your French knot. You can do some gorgeous stitching with French knots. I've seen slow stitching where all they've used are French knots. I've had got students that love them. Um, they're very effective. So I'm just going to do one more and then we'll crack on with the um, slow stitch. So one, two, three, four. Slide them down. Keep your tension. Slide your needle into your fabric. Give it a tug. And there you go, French knots, simple. So we've had a look at the, um, the way that you make a French knot and how you do your chain stitching. And I think when we're making these branches, because branches have such a lot of texture, it would be quite nice to mix those stitches up a little bit so you get that kind of feel and um, adding in some French knots and really making them um, exciting. So I'm going to start off with a lighter shade of brown. It's very soft brown and I'm just going to lock a stitch in under here because we're going to start with this nice big branch in the middle. Everything else leads off it and it'll give us somewhere to hang our catkins. I'm going to come up 
through the centre of these two leaves. So I'm going to start off, I'm just going to turn this around because I, I can't do chain stitch upside down. It's very difficult, so I'm going to have to show you from this way around. So I'm just going to start off by, I think I'm going to use, shall I chain stitch or shall I stem stitch? No, let's stem stitch this one. And we're actually going to be a bit adventurous because we're going to stem stitch two colours. So this is the lighter side. So this is where the light's hitting the tree. So when you're doing things like this, have a look when you're out walking and look at how the light interacts with what you're looking at. So if you're stitching anything with nature in it, which is mostly what I like to do, um, pay attention to the way the light falls. So I'm trying to do this so you can see. Um, just the whole point of the exercise really. And look at the colours that it creates. It's always amazing when you look at paintings and you think, well why have they added that blue and that mauve and that's not realistic. And then you, you put the, take a camera out with you one day and you take some photographs and you realise that actually there are so many colours in everything and the light interacts with a subject and you do get these lovely colour changes. So have a look when you're out and it adds a little dimension to your walks as well because if you're paying attention to what you're looking at. So I'm just going to come up here um, and we're just going to come up and just do this branch here. So when you're when you you know when you're walking and you're paying attention to what you're looking at, you I think you get a much richer walk for it, and you come home with inspiration and and a real appreciation as well of where you've been, and I think you remember those walks much more. Sometimes I come home with bits and pieces when I'm walking, a bit like a kid <laughs> when you used to go to the woods as a child and my pockets would be full of fur cones and feathers and I'd have feathers stuck in my hair very often and still do and um, and you brought home pockets full of bits and pieces and my mum was a teacher and she taught nursery nurses so she was a big one for having displays and interest tables and at our dining room we had a, a long sideboard and the sideboard always had a version of an interest table because she'd be practicing and trying things out and working things out for the next week. So we'd go for a walk on a Sunday afternoon and we'd come home and then she'd go, what did you bring home? Will it work? And we'd make these displays on the, on the sideboard. <laughs> it was really good fun. And, uh, and it was, it was really interesting because we'd have, we'd, we'd compare what we'd picked up and have a look at the patterns and the colors and I drew everything. So that was really my my start of being inspired by nature and then when I took up photography it kind of carried on from there. So it's no different when I sew. So we've come up here with a lovely nice um, a little bit wiggly. We don't want a straight line obviously because very few branches are dead straight. I'm just going to finish that stitch off and then we're going to come up beside it with another stem stitch but we're going to use a darker brown not massively darker I'm not going to go really deep dark chocolate brown but what I oh actually I'm going to start from this end but what I am going to do is try and create some light and dark some 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 light and shade so you've got where the sun's hitting or where the light's hitting and then underneath that you've got the shadow. So I'm going to come up on the outside of this branch. So to this side of the branch because it's underneath. So my branch is curving out like that. So this is going to be the underneath side. And then I'm going to stem stitch side by side and I'm going to come up along here and I'm going to fill in, you'll see a little bit better in a minute when I come away from the leaf because these stitches are a little bit underneath this leaf and then 
underneath the light and it doesn't matter if the stitches go a little bit over the top of your original stitches because it doesn't need to be um, dead straight and you can use different length stitches don't worry about having to stick to oh I've, I've had that length stitch here so I must follow it you don't what you're doing is you're creating texture and you're creating light and you're creating shadow so when you look at that can you see now you've got a darker side underneath and a lighter side above so you're basically in charge of where the sun is so you can look at that and go well, which where where's my shadow coming where's my light coming this is this is a slow stitch as a as an image um, some slow stitches you won't you won't be doing specifics necessarily some of them you'll literally just be piecing fabrics and piecing lace and you know and it's a lovely random pattern but this one I decided to to do more as a, as a little image because I wanted to really replicate the idea of spring and and also just show you uh, different stitches and I want at the end of this to have a nice little set of all of the seasons so we will be doing a summer we will be doing an autumn and we will be doing a winter and we'll be doing other things as well so there'll be lots of other bits and pieces that will um, appear on our channel and if you want to go and have a look at some more of what we do please go and visit our Facebook page Calico K with a K so it's K-A-L-I-C-O Calico um, Calico dash K and you'll you'll notice there's a lot of um, blue and yellow behind me when when there's a shot of my face um, and our our logo is on blue and yellow so if you find something that looks like that that'll be us and there will be a link um, on the video anyway so you'll be able to find us from there and also our website so when I I'm, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit because I want to introduce you to the kits that um, you can you can have to help you with some inspiration for slow stitching so there we go there's the the first branch it's two-tone so it gives you this feeling of light and shade so you can see here there's a nice feel there of light and shade so I've, I just lifted it up and realized you can't see so I put it back down so there we go so I'm going to just go ahead and do the other branches just the same um, but we'll just do a catkin or two first before we head off to do the rest of it so let's make a catkin so on this branch I think I'm going to put a couple of little catkins at the top here and I'll go on and do something there in a little while I might not even do that branch I might just concentrate on the ones coming over here because that one's a little bit out on the edge so to start with my catkin let's just give us a couple of lines to work from so catkins generally fall in pairs um, twos and threes actually let's have a third we'll have something coming out here and they are a mixture of if you can if I pull one of these I'll hold that down here um, they're a mixture really of colors so when I was walking this morning I picked these two little branches so the difference in color is quite dramatic this is um, a quite a lime greeny yellowy color and these have got these are a bit more mature and these are much more brown in fact they're almost the same color as the branch that we've used but I will lighten them up a bit so look at your colors and how they work and I thought catkins and snowdrops sat really well together as well because they are that linked color so I'm going to start off by using the lighter of the brown and this time we're going to use the chain stitch that you've learned so I'm just going to lock up my stitch here there we go 
and then we're going to chain stitch the catkin. So down we go, remember to make your loop. It's really difficult doing this back to front. I normally have it facing me, so it's good fun when you're trying to do it. Good practice, really, when you're doing it with a camera in front of you. Last time I was, I because this is so new for us, last time I was filmed doing any of this, it was a photography class, and I used to teach photography. And, um, and a student wasn't going to make a lesson, and she said, could I video the lesson? I was horrified. That was a long time ago. So there we go. So that's our first layer for that catkin. So I'm going to just finish that stitch off. So there's, we've just chained down. There's not a lot of yellow or colour in that yet. So we'll just lock that bit off and then I can get rid of that colour. And we'll then go to, I think, yellow. And we'll add some yellow in. So back to the top and just lock up the stitch. There we go. And then we're going to come out inside one of the chains. So if I flip that over, we're going to come inside the loop of that chain and we're going to make a French knot the way that I showed you. So round and round and round. I'm going to do four round, tighten it up and pop back down inside that loop. And then when you pull it, you start to get this sort of knobbly effect. So I'm going to come up in the next one and round, two, three, four, and then I'm going to keep that tension and I'm going to go back down in. Oh, gone through a stitch and give it a tug. And you don't want these to be sitting like little soldiers because that's not how they sit if you look at a catkin. So if I put this branch just down so you can see it at the side here. Can you see it's there's no way that that's they're all lined up like little soldiers they're not so you don't need to do that so you can come up and out wherever two three four i'm just using those the the loops of the chain to give me um a clue as to where i'm going so i'm going to come up just beside the chain on this one and one, two, three, four, again. And we'll just carry on filling this catkin in. So can you see that's now taken on a little bit of a knobbly feel? So that's how we're going to do that, do those catkins. So you start with the base of the chain stitch and then you infill with um, with some lovely little French knots and you can alternate the colours if you want to so you know you could choose to do more of a yellowy lime green one like this like that catkin there or you can keep to the yellowy feel and I think it just gives a bit more contrast I don't think this needs any more green it just you know it just is saturated with green now so I'm going to keep I'm going to continue to do these and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the lettering and how to do the logo. So here we are. A couple more done. Um, but rather than going and doing the whole branch right now, I want to show you um, a little banner that I've made to go into the corner over here with our, do you remember our overlapping leaf here? So, I had to think about the words that I wanted to use and my overriding feeling for this was hope. So it was hope and spring and new. 
and I wrote the three words down. And as I wrote them, I wrote them new and hope in spring and realised that N-H-S. So I thought, ah, oh, okay. In the current climate that we're in, they are a big deal. And everybody's trying their hardest, I think, to make sure that, you know, we keep them afloat. And so I thought, okay, it's a reminder of the year that we're in, um, or the second year that we're in. And so I decided I'd use rainbow colours to depict my words. So I had a big pot full of rainbow embroidery threads. And I also found quite a nice little rainbow ribbon. And I may or may not use this, I haven't decided. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. I want to show you this little banner. So I made a little banner. And I'm not going to worry about the edges because I am going to fray these off. But I want to put it into the corner. And I thought, if I've got that leaf, I'm just going to let that leaf trail so that the catkins come down, my little banner's there, the leaf's part of it, it's tucked in under. I might trim that up a little bit. And the whole thing just sits coherently. So I made this on a, let's pop that over there for a minute. I made this on a little piece of calico. I drew it out first using the friction pen that we've been using, which is a heat um, sensitive pen. So you draw right out or draw out or trace anything that you're going to use. And then when you're finished and you want to get rid of the writing, if you can see it, you just hold the iron just over the top of it. The heat, it's just only, you don't need to touch it. You just hold the heat there and it'll disappear. It's like magic. It's brilliant. I use these quite a lot. Um, just to because I can doodle with them and they're just like using a fountain pen uh, not fountain pen a um, ballpoint pen just draw as and when as you like and I do a lot of freehand drawing but if you want to trace something again you can put your fabric over the top of you need to if you're printing things out sometimes it's worth going over them with a sharpie so you can see through it but um, they're quite good for doodling and also for just doing lettering. So I just wrote New Hope and Spring and then I alternated my colours. So I've just created a feel of a rainbow. And I'm going to stitch this on with just running stitch around the edges um, very, very simply. If you didn't want to fray it, you could use a blanket stitch, you could, do, you could use a chain stitch, you could use a stem stitch. Um, anything that's an attachment stitch so they're all attaching stitches they're all good for that and anything else that you feel that you want to add to your slow stitch so in true um, Blue Peter style because obviously they are the masters of everything I wanted to do this in a slow stitch because I wanted to be able to stitch it mindfully have a think about how it was all going to be and so before we came to the last section, I actually decided that I'd do one from start to finish. So here is my start to finish. And it's just the same as we've been doing over the last three weeks, but I, I just decided that I'd, I'd do it so that I knew that it, was, um, it worked as a good mindfulness stitch. So as you can see, if you have a look at that, that's just stitched in. I've stem stitched, completed the stem stitch on that leaf, so that leaf overlaps. And I've just frayed out the edges. And I did running stitch all the way around. And then I went through and did a running stitch in a different color and then frayed it out. Now that won't go any further. It won't fray any further. It will just go to those stitches and stay. But I just wanted it to feel a little bit raggedy. And, and I added a little button and to be fair I may well add more bits to this because sometimes you can live with it I, what I tend to do is I pop it on my desk 
and then I have a good look at it over the next couple of weeks and I might go mm, yeah, it might, I, I, maybe this needs a few more sparkles maybe I'll trail the sparkles out here a little bit more so you can add to it you can make it feel how you want to to make something feel so if you're when you're doing your slow stitching you have to kind of know where it finishes because you can go mad and carry on and carry on and carry on and then it just is oh, so busy um, or not or you might just choose to do something really simple now one of the things that um, I have been asked and I, I spoke about this in part one a little bit is what do I stitch so when you start thinking about slow stitching you just, you know gather lots of resources together so for example I've got buttons and I've got pots of beads I love these pots <laughs> don't need that much jam but I do like the pots um, and I, so I gather together all of the bits and pieces that I might want and I have them on the desk or the table with me and we're in a uh, we're in a, a, um, a temporary studio at the moment because exciting times but I'll, I'll take you with me on this journey but we are we will be moving into a little barn um, so I gather all the resources up I've been for my walk I've got my inspiration it's here what do I do? How do I go about it? Um, so what we've done is we've put together some kits, excuse me, and the first one that we, I'm just going to pop this over here for a minute, the first one that we designed was, it's called Driftwood Dreams and it's based on the coastal feel. So it's 80% of it will be re recycled and, and pre-loved fabrics. They're all laundered, they're all lovely. Um, so each, every every few kits, they change because obviously we run out of some fabric, so we put a new piece in. But they're full of inspiring bits and bobs. So they're based on a 12 and a half inch calico square. And then we've put lots of different things in them that you can add to, you can cut the fabric up, you can, we've, some of them have got patterns on them, the repeating patterns, so you can cut those out. Um, there's some lovely shimmery bits, we've put whorls, we've put rope, um, there's always a needle threader, so if you're, if you hate threading needles, there's embroidery silks, there's buttons, there's beads, there's all sorts of little bits and pieces in there, and you'll find these on the the website which is calicok.com remember it's a k not a c for calico and all the details are are, um, are obviously on the link here as well so that's the coaster one and then last year we decided in our complete infinite madness that we would do calendar kits little did we know that 2020 was going to throw that at us but we began and we carried on and so some of the early April, May, June have a little bit of uh, a hint of what was going on last year. Um, March, for example, has a little tiny toilet roll because none of us had any. Um, so that's in there. But these are January and February. And these were these stay the same. So we'll, we'll do new ones this year because we don't really want to remember last year that intensely some of us didn't have a good time some of us did um, some of us had adventures and lovely family time that we didn't expect to have so January it's that's all about ooh, cold weather and lovely walks with big woolly jackets on and ice skating maybe um, we've had plenty of ice in fact the Thames froze over so hello uh, so we've put lots of fabrics in here there's fleece so it's like bit of snow and some gorgeous wools and some felts and then each of the calendar kits has a template so this one's got a little um, ice skate boot template and inside it's not instructions but it's um, it's an inspiration sheet so it will tell you it'll give you ideas and there's also two embroidery stitches in each of the calendar kits. So there's instructions on how to do an embroidery stitch that you might find useful for that particular one. So January, there's several different colorways. February is all full of love and lemons. 
it's celebrating pancake day celebrating valentine's day there's lots of lovely colors in there there's reds and rich colors and there's lemons and um, and the template for that is a little pancake um, pan so if you want to do that there's also a little bunch of flowers so there's all sorts of bits and pieces in there so they are lovely and if you're stuck and you think well I, I, you know i really want to do some stitching i want to get into this stitching i want to get into slow stitching but you're really not sure how to go about it these are really good starting and they're lightweight so if you're looking for a gift for somebody who does also want to do slow stitching or you want to encourage somebody to get into it they post really easily so there's all three of those so thank you so much for joining in and i really would love to see anything that you make if you want to post photographs on our facebook page we would absolutely love to see them it would be wonderful um, it's it's a joy to know that there are other people out there who are as inspired as we get and i know i could get quite overexcited sometimes about it all but there we go i've been sewing since i was about seven and i still love it to this day so enjoy take care be very mindful enjoy your walks open your eyes and see what you can find and we'll see you again soon take care bye bye